Hello everybody and welcome to your very first module in the Lesson Lab sequence titled Standards-Based Objectives as designed and produced by the Region 11 Service Center. After watching this video, you'll be able to locate and define parts of the TEKS and use a lesson frame and 4M strategy to craft a lesson objective. For today's activities, you're going to need access to your subject and grade level TEKS. If you teach, plan on teaching more than one content, just choose one. If you do a simple Google search of TEKS, it'll probably lead you to the official site tea.texas.gov forward slash curriculum forward slash TEKS. You don't have to print these out, but I've always found it helpful to have a paper copy available. And as we break down some of these state standards, it may be helpful for you to underline or highlight different areas of the TEKS. You'll also need the Fundamental 5 and Teach Like a Champion 2.0. So really quickly, I want to give you an overview for how you'll be assessed over the content of each of these video modules. I'm sure you know that a major component of the teacher certification program is that you attend these lesson lab nights at the Region 11 Service Center building where you have prepared and you'll perform a 10 minute mini lesson that shows what you've learned from these modules. It's going to give you an opportunity to practice in front of a, a mock student audience. There'll probably be three to five other um, teacher applicants and you'll perform in front of them and there'll be a, a coach there that will give you feedback for um, your mini lesson. So, to receive credit for this particular video module, you'll need to achieve all of the criteria in the proficient column of this rubric. So let's take a look at that really quick. To receive proficient level status and the standards-based objective, you will need to, of course, create and share an objective that you've written with your student audience. Now, this objective should be aligned to a state standard and it needs to be written in student-friendly language so they can understand exactly what it is they're doing. Lastly, this objective must be manageable and measurable within one class period. It's a daily objective, not necessarily a unit objective. You'll notice there's an extra challenge column that is 100% completely optional, but it's there for all you go-getters and teachers who are wanting to go above and beyond. These extra challenge components or criteria are intended to help you move towards the master's level proficiency ranking whenever you are um, really being evaluated by your principal or assistant principal. So our extra challenges for this video module are to, while you're sharing this objective, establish the relevance to students' lives, meaning why is this important or how does it relate to um, to their future? Why, why is this skill worth spending time and effort on? Finally, the extra last extra challenge is to include students in the process of sharing the objective. Maybe you have them read a part of the objective, or maybe you ask them, so what, is this, what does this mean to you? What do you think you'll need to be able to do? So this is our proficiency rubric. This content is extremely important as it relates to ultimately how you will be um, assessed over the content of these video modules. Now that we've got our materials and know how we'll be assessed, let's get started. Throughout this video module and in future modules, you'll hear me refer to the TEKS. What are these TEKS? Well, they stand for the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills. Some people pronounce them TEKS, some people pronounce them TEX. I don't want to get into that argument, but you'll hear me pronounce it as the TEKS. The TEKS are state-mandated curriculum standards that establish what every single student from grade kindergarten to 12 should know and be able to do by the end of that course or grade. You may have also heard of the Common Core Standards. Texas does not use the Common Core Standards. 45 states in the United States use the Common Core Standards, but Texas has its own set of standards called the TEKS. The TEKS were written by Texas educators. They are approved by the State Board of Education in 1997. They're non-negotiable. They're the sole source of the STAR test, 
and there's a review process for revising and updating the TEKS. So it's important to note that the TEKS do not provide a complete scope and sequence, meaning that the TEKS don't tell you when and how to teach something. In addition, the TEKS resemble all the essential skills and knowledge that students could have and, and hopefully should have by the end of the year, but it doesn't necessarily mean all of your students will be proficient in all of the standards. It's what we're working towards at a particular grade level. The TEKS do, however, outline the most essential knowledge and skills students must have to be ready for the next grade level, and they're sequenced in a way that helps lead students to post-secondary success. The TEKS align curriculum development, so no matter what school the students go to, they're still held to the same high standards. These standards drive lesson planning and help inform stakeholders about what's being taught in their schools. Now that we know what the TEKS are and the purpose they serve, let's take a closer look at the structure of the TEKS and get a better idea for how they are organized. There are four foundational content areas within the TEKS, which include English language arts and reading, math, science, and social studies. There are also TEKS for non-core subject areas such as the fine arts, physical education, career and technical education, languages other than English, and health. No matter the content area, each set of TEKS has four parts to them. The introduction, the strands, the knowledge and skill statements, and finally, the student expectations. Here's a visual to help you see how these parts work together. Every set of TEKS starts with an introduction, and the major concepts are organized into strands. Knowledge and skill statements help define what these major strands are, and the student expectations let you know how students can show their success with the knowledge and skill statements. This is confusing to you, that's okay. In the next slides, we're going to look at each of these portions individually. So the introduction is going to provide a brief overview of the knowledge and skills for a greater course, and oftentimes it's going to provide contextual information or other notables to consider for the grade and content level. We went ahead and accessed the 6th grade mathematics TEKS and copied the language down onto this slide here just to give you an idea of what this looks like. We have the introduction here. If you haven't yet taken a moment to see the introduction for your grade and content level TEKS, take a few minutes to access your TEKS and scan over the introduction. If you're able to, putting a bracket around the introduction will help serve as a visual aid to help identify the different parts of the TEKS. The next part of the TEKS are the strands, which organize the knowledge and skill statements into overarching categories. In our 6th grade mathematics TEKS, the phrase next to the numbers are considered the strands. You can see that the first two strands are mathematic process standards and number and operations. At this time, you may want to pause the video to identify how your standards are organized. Putting a box around the strands will help you identify the parts of the TEKS. Following the strands are the knowledge and skill statements. The knowledge and skill statements describe what particular concepts and skills are to be learned within the strands. Some strands have multiple knowledge and skill statements, while others may just have one. Here's a portion of the knowledge and skill statements that follow the strands. You could see that they're underlined in green. At this time, you may want to pause the video to locate and underline the knowledge and skill statements you have in your version of the TEKS. Again, this is all just meant to help us understand how the TEKS are organized. The final part of the TEKS, and the part of the TEKS that helps most when creating daily objectives, are the student expectations. While the knowledge and skill statements detail what skills and concepts are to be learned, the student expectations detail how the students show their learning. So within the first knowledge and skill statement in the 6th grade math TEKS, we have seven student expectations. 
we refer to them as 1a, 1b, 1c, all the way to 1g. At this time, you may want to pause the video and locate the student expectations within your TEKS. Circle them to help distinguish the student expectations from the other part of the TEKS. When knowledge and skill statements have student expectations that follow, they're bound and married together. Aww. Meaning that when we refer to a student expectation, we wouldn't just say E. We'd say 4E or 13B or 1C. The numbers and letters can't be separated, otherwise they lose their meaning. Before we move ahead, let's take a moment to stop and check our own understanding. Can you identify the function of each part of the TEKS? The introduction, the strands, the knowledge and skill statements, and the student expectations? What function do they serve? Pause the video and see if you could distinguish the four parts of the TEKS and describe the relationship between them. All right, all right, we are ready to move on. I'd like to start with a quote by Stephen R. Covey, author of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and relate this quote to the context of the TEKS and lesson planning. So, to begin with the end in mind means to start with a clear understanding of your destination. You can consider the TEKS a destination. It means to know where you're going so that you better understand where you are now and so that the steps you take are always in the right direction. For the rest of this module, we're going to focus on creating these steps that are going to head you and your students in the right direction of mastering the TEKS. So, the TEKS establish the grade level demands for a particular content. It's your job as a teacher to figure out, on a daily basis, how you can help students master the TEKS. Once you analyze the TEKS, you can begin to plot out the steps to help students master a set of knowledge or skills. These steps that you take are summarized in the form of a statement called the lesson objective. Teachers craft daily lesson objectives that briefly describe what students will learn and give clues to how students will show they've learned or progressed. Thus, a lesson objective helps set the goal your students will strive to meet at the end of a lesson and it sets a target for how students will be smarter after doing the work in class. Kane and Laird's The Fundamental Five provides an excellent template for us to create daily lesson objectives, which of course is a primary goal of this module. What I'd like you to do is to select a TEKS that you'd like to create a lesson objective for. With that TEKS in mind, scan Chapter 3, Framing the Lesson. As you read, consider how you could turn your TEKS into a daily lesson objective using the I Will, We Will lesson frame. Time for another checkpoint. At this time, pause and create a lesson objective using the We Will, I Will lesson frame. While some lesson objectives may contain multiple SEs, try to select one SE to turn into a daily lesson objective. Check out pages 28 and 29 of the Fundamental 5 for examples. Now that you've drafted your lesson objective, it's time to take a closer look and analyze how it measures up. Doug Lamov's Teach Like a Champion 2.0 is full of great techniques. One of them, the 4M objective writing technique, helps teachers make sure their lesson objectives fit certain criteria. Let's take some time to learn about these criteria. Consider your lesson objective, then read pages 137 to 140. As you read, analyze whether your lesson objective meets the 4M criteria. Following the reading, I hope you're able to analyze whether your objective met the 4M criteria of being manageable, measurable, made first, and most important. Don't be afraid to go back and make changes to your lesson objective to make sure it adheres to the technique. Your lesson objective needs to be manageable within one class period. This means that learning should realistically be accomplished by most, if not all, students. 
the lesson objective that you share in your lesson lab will need to be measurable, meaning that it needs to state how success will be determined by the end of the lesson. If you're using the lesson frame, you can state how the learning will be measured in the I will portion of the frame. The I will portion should say how the students will demonstrate their learning with some sort of end product or task. Some schools may ask teachers to quantify what success will look like, meaning including language like you'll write two sentences describing or students will answer three out of four questions accurately. Results from the demonstration of learning provides an insight for how effectively the sequence of learning tasks prepared students for success. For an objective to meet the 4M criteria, it must also be made first before the activities. This is pretty difficult as a first year teacher as you're trying to figure out what sorts of activities help students learn the best. However, we must always keep the end in mind and remember that the objective should guide the learning tasks and not be written to justify a grab bag of activities. Finally, the objective and learning tasks in general should focus on what's most important on the path to post-secondary readiness and nothing else. We need to choose our activities and assessments carefully so that we're always pushing students toward the next step in their education. Phew! We have learned a lot in this course. The good news is that your time and effort working on this module will literally pay off every single day that you teach. You gained a solid understanding of the TEKS. You learned how to frame the state standards into daily lesson objectives, and even found out a way to analyze your objectives. These are foundational skills that you'll continue to refine as you gain experience teaching your content. Don't beat yourself up too much if creating a lesson objective was difficult. Take a moment to give yourself a pat on the back before we give some tips to help you be successful for this portion of the lesson lab. Crafting a lesson objective is one thing, but sharing the learning intentions with students is another key aspect to establishing a culture of learning. Lesson objectives should be posted in the same visible location every day. If you want to learn more about this, Teach Like a Champion 2.0 has some information about posting objectives on pages 140 to 143. Your lesson objectives should be written in as plain English as possible, meaning that it's not written in the exact same language as the state standard. It comes from that, but it's written in a way so your students can understand it. Now, we do want to include the terminology of the, the concepts or ideas because students need to be able to identify those words and ultimately be able to say those words or understand those concepts. But we just need to make sure that it's written in a, a simple way so that they, they get it. And finally, we have to share these lesson objectives we create. They don't just exist on the walls. We need to share it with students at the beginning of class, and the best teachers involve students in the sharing process. On this slide, we have an example of a teacher sharing the first portion of her lesson frame with her students. And in this example, the teacher satisfies the extra challenge of involving students in this process. So here's an example of what it would sound like. Teacher says, today we will be learning how to add fractions with equal denominators. Angel, can you tell me which part of the fraction is a denominator? Angel's a good student, and he says, the denominator is the bottom part of the fraction. Teacher responds, you got it, Angel. Remember, denominator is down and numerator is north or up. In just a moment, I want you to turn and talk to your partner about how today's objective built off of yesterday's learning. We'll take a look one more time at this proficiency rubric to make sure we achieve all the proficient criteria. So again, you'll craft a learning objective that comes from a state standard that's written in student-friendly language. Make sure you can tell us what the state standard is, if it's 1A, 2B, 12C. Have that information available to us. You don't necessarily need to share that with the students, but I know that your administrator would definitely like to know the, the TEKS, the state standard or student expectation. So this objective that you create should be manageable and measurable within one class period, 
And you, of course, need to share the objective with the students. We can't just have it posted and then get on with the, the mini lesson. We need to actually verbally share it with the students. For that extra challenge, establish the relevance to students' lives. How does this learning come into play later on in life? Is it a skill that we use every day? When do you use it? And finally, for that extra challenge, find a way to include students in the process of sharing the objective. Our next slide is going to contain a few tips for your 10-minute mini lesson. First, come prepared with a lesson objective that's based on a grade level teaks of a content you plan on teaching. Be ready to share the number and letter of the student expectation before the mini lesson begins. There's a few options you have to post your learning objective. You can write it on the dry erase board that we'll have at the building. You can bring your objective already written with marker on computer construction paper, or you could share it on the screen digitally using a laptop that we provide. We'll start a timer for the mini lesson. Again, it'll be a 10 minute timer that you could take up to 10 minutes. And um, you'll need to communicate your learning objective as if you were a teacher in front of your students. Sharing the objective shouldn't take too long, about one to three minutes, depending on how much you decide to involve the students in, in the process. Just remember that there's components of two other modules in the first lesson lab that you'll include within this 10 minutes. So sharing your standard-based learning objective will need to be efficient and shared with confidence. Thanks for watching this module titled Standards-Based Objectives that was designed and produced by the Region 11 Education Service Center. This video referred to content from the Fundamental 5, Teach Like a Champion 2.0, the TEKS were taken from tea.texas.gov, and images were taken from Pixabay, Unsplash, and 123RF.